Hello, and welcome to another Market Muse content strategy webinar in our series. I'm Jeff Coyle, the co-founder of Market Muse, um, and today we're speaking to an amazing guest, uh, you know, good friend of mine, amazing SEO, amazing business person, investor, just steward of digital marketing. Uh, and I'm going to tease who that is in a second uh, while we do a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, while we're here, ask us anything. Um, if it's directly relevant to our conversation, I may be able to weave it in um, and ask our guests the discussion topic. Uh, if it's not, we'll save some time at the end for a QA. and a um, And when you go back, um, you're going to get an email from us with some follow-ups, uh, some links, and also a link to this uh, webinar replay. Share it, uh, tag us, uh, do everything that you should be doing. Uh, and while you're at it, go check out our webinar archive. We've got hundreds of replays from amazing thought leaders like Andy Crestadina, uh, Pam Didner on sales enablement, Nick Eubanks on keyword research, um, so many different webinar replays that you can learn from uh, no matter where you are in your content marketing journey and no matter what type of content you're building or what sites you're putting out great quality content on. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, today's discussion is from Black Hat SEO to quality content production powerhouse. And I'd say I definitely, I'm not going to say I have the best example of Black Hat SEO on here, but I definitely have somebody who can speak the language of investment oh, in investment digital marketing, in digital. Um, P owns PPC agencies, search engine optimization agencies, uh, thought leader in the space, James Dooley. Thanks for joining us. Um, currently the founder and CEO of Promo SEO, but you've got a lot of things going on. Uh, can you give us a little bit of details, kind of how you got to where you are? what you're currently working on and, you know, your current mission? Yeah, so, I mean, it all started from um, owning a construction company um, back 15 years ago, and I realized I needed um, inbound inquiries. So I needed a website, I needed to rank the website, and then from there then I would got into the realms of SEO, um, started to rank. It took me quite a while. I failed miserably for many years. Um, I, I ended up going down the road of being the Black Hat route because that seemed to be working the best back then with like Warrior Forum and Black Hat World and stuff like that. Um, and I just did what what worked. Um, and I wouldn't say, but I wouldn't really call myself a Black Hat SEO back then or a White Hat SEO. I'd just call myself a return on investment kind of hat, hat SEO. Um, and then from there then, from there, then we um, we started to realize we could do what we've done for our own sites, for other people's websites. And then we got into doing lead generation for customers who who give us work. And then we just built it out from there and then roll on like Panda and Penguin and every other update that there's been. Um, there's been a lot of ups and downs throughout the journey, um, but we've learned from it. We've built a, our own in-house testing team to see what's working and what's not working. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the money that we've kind of earned along the way, we've reinvested quite nicely in um, bricks and mortar type companies, uh, digital companies, link building agencies, content agencies, social media ads agencies, PPC agencies. We, we try to do a whole holistic approach of everything related to trying to generate inquiries and business online. Nice. And yeah, that's what I always love about speaking with you is that there's a focus on testing. There's a focus on, is this speculative? Is this a reasonably tested or is this truly conclusive? Um, and, yeah. and that's been, you know, really consistent. Um, and then, you know, you are not just focused on, you know, one channel, you know, you're looking at paid, you're also focused on lead generation, you know, being one of the leaders in a number of verticals in the UK. Um, so I really appreciate that. And, and that's why I wanted to have you on this discussion today, because there's a lot of uncertainty in this space right now. Um, I've actually yeah. saw today um, a number of posts about how, you know, businesses that were recently impacted by quality uh, constraints can't recover or they're not going to recover or it's going to take them, you know, years to recover. I mean, my response is that it's going to be difficult if you've made lots of, you know, cho bad choices or choices that are now vetting as bad. But, you know, that it's not a, it's not a lost hope here. There's there's a path to high quality, 
And so I would love to learn more about your approach to content and then again, how you see recovery um, right now like prevailing. Yeah, so I mean, but back in the old days, I used to cheap out on content and then I used to just hit it, hit it with bat links. And that's kind of how, how it used to work. Um, roll on to today's algorithms and with regards to NLP and, and the passing of keywords and, and words that are needed on, on the page, Google have come become a lot better at understanding um, intent and, and content in itself. So now you, you've got to make certain that you're looking to do quality content, not just on the single page, but topical authority and having lots of different topics all being covered in a nice format, clustered together very nicely. Um, so I think we've used pretty much every single one of your competitors when it comes down to content optimization tools. I remember back back in the heyday, I used to think, oh, market moves is expensive. I could just use another tool that could do what you do. But the, but the truth of the matter is, and this is why I'm on I'm on the podcast, is because I'm a massive advocate of market moves, um, the topical modeling system of what it uses. It's not just copycat content. It's not just doing correlation of content, which does not work. And I think people have have ridden the kind of waves for a few years of copycat content. And I think mm -hmm. Google have done a good, if, in my opinion, and you know what, I'm going to get a lot of grief for this. In my opinion, they've done a good job of clearing out a lot of copycat sites. So if, if I clicked on number one result for best 10 lawnmowers and I didn't get what I wanted and I clicked on the number two result and it gave me the exact same list and the exact same type of content, I didn't like number one results, so I'm not going to like number two results either. And then number three results copied from number one and number two. So Google's got to put a diverse kind of set of results in there. It's got to have some Reddit kind of discussion forums and stuff like that. And there's a lot of people slandering them at the moment. And I feel like there's times where there's certain results that may, might, might not, shouldn't be there maybe. But actually all these people, it's like, some people I'm asking who, who've built these niche websites, I, I've, I've said to them, have you bought these 10 lawnmowers? This has just been one of the examples that you're right. reviewing. No. Right. So you've not bought, you've not, you've literally not bought any of them. You've not used any of them, but you want to rank number one for best 10 lawnmowers, even though you've never used one of them and you just put it in order of who pays the most affiliate. It's like you don't deserve to be ranking. Right. And then, and then they've just done copycat content. They've just, if anything, and obviously off off this um, conversation, me and you've had several conversations about over-optimization of content. Um, obviously, I've got my own in-house testing team, and this is why I'm continuously trying to talk to people like yourself that's got a lot of data. And and that's what seems to be recovering sites. If anything, I'm, I'm on the lookout at present for buying sites that have been penalized. And it's because... These people have built sites on quicksand. They've cheaped out exactly what I did 10 years ago. They've cheaped out on links. They've cheaped out on content. They've got a lot of content out there. Is it recoverable? Absolutely. Of course it's recoverable. Everything's recoverable. Is it easy? No, it's not. But if you understand what good quality content looks like, and you can turn around and build an actual brand behind the website and build good quality clusters nicely internal links and get the right topics on the page, then it's recoverable. Yeah, I mean, I can't shake my head more on most of those topics than I did. Uh, but it's a it's 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 tough right now because it's a lot of it could be a lot of work or it could be yeah. not a lot of work. And the 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 stress of not knowing how much work it's going to be to get your, you know, your house in order. Um, yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, you, you say it very elegantly as you know, if you would know what quality content looks like, um, but it, it goes into, you know, I, I always like to say you don't deserve to be there at the bottom of the funnel unless you were there at the top of the funnel. Um, but it yeah. speaks to your best, your best lawnmowers example. And we've had, a, I believe we had a, a webinar um, speaking specifically to reviews content and how it was impacted and um, you know, I, I, you know I've, been, I've been preaching on top of the soapbox for about four years on this. It said, you know, like, no, it's not a good idea that your dog ate all 10 of those different dog foods that day. Um, they probably, you know, your one dog shouldn't have all 10 of those dog foods. 
Um, and yeah. so if you're a one person show and, and, you know, it's highly likely you haven't tasted it. And when you're discussing how delicious that dog food is, you know, I know you don't really have that experience. Um, and so, you know, you get into the, the, the lawnmower example. No, you didn't. You know, it's so hard to build a real product testing framework. I used to uh, manage soft, uh, uh, notebook review, um, storage review, a number of sites. I was I managed the traffic through those sites and we had to have a lab, right? Real tests, proof of those tests, right? That's the stuff that's going to win in the long term. Um, yeah. And, you know, in the short term, you shouldn't be surprised that you're, I call them stock blur, you know, stock blurb link pages, stock imagery, little blurb affiliate link, stock imagery, little blurb affiliate link, you know, yeah. doesn't have, lo- doesn't have longevity. It's great that you yeah. made money when you did, um, but it's not the future. And I you know what other types of, um, you know, page structures would maybe at one point, you know, we talked about roundups, um, reviews, uh, maybe aren't, aren't going to have that like, type of longevity, but maybe had some long, had some strength at one point. Um, so these these lots back then, I mean, programmatic SEO, like literally duplicated content, used to work right. great. Um, you could literally do duplicated content, hit um, hit hit them with links, and it used to work. There was lots of different right. where you could do white text on a white background. You could like put lots of keywords in um, div tags, um, in alt tags, and all this. There's lots of ways how you could manipulate getting. Um, entities and keywords and skip gram dominant keywords and stuff like that in in the page. But the truth of the matter is, like you said, if you've not got the top of the funnel, you shouldn't be ranking for the bottom of the funnel. You should be trying to cover everything. And not only that, is that that time on site of people clicking through to those different pages and that user experience and the behavioral signals that is happening. Um, also, the top of the funnel, the top of the funnel, kind of articles are the ones that seem to get your most social shares, that seem to get you the most traffic, that seem to get you, you can then do like videos, you can do unique images. Those unique images get used in a lot of other places, might get you natural backlinks and stuff like that. So it's just about doing, and and this sounds very, it sounds hard and it, to be fair nowadays, it is hard. But mm-hmm. if you if you're looking to, grow a website online, you've got to treat it like a real business. You have to do good quality images, good quality videos, get yourself a full topical map being created, um, which is like via good keyword research. Make certain you're covering the topic in its entirety, categorize them nicely together and cluster them, and then use tools like Market Moves, which is going to give you, using stuff like Market Moves gives you the cheat sheet to get you what is needed. like. Um, it was only when I properly started to, to dig deep properly into the infantry section and I put the site in. And yours is the only tool that I know that efficiently tells me my topical authority score. And what I love about it is how I can load in my website, put the keyword there and check the keyword difficulty that is run against my own website. Everyone else runs it against tools like Hrevs or SEMrush right. and looks at the, the keyword difficulty and the DR of the website and looks at a keyword difficulty score. No one's even looking at with regards to how quality is that content and how good is that topical authority of that whole domain. And yours does that. And then what it does is it allows you to, to make certain that you're going, what's going to give me the best bang for my buck? Right, if I go and create this page on my website where I've already got some topical authority, I'm going to win. I'm going to create this page and I'm going to rank pretty much position number one very, very, very quickly. And that's going to get me traffic. And then there's certain like things where you can move through your traffic tiers. And, tra- and traffic is a huge indication to Google of trust. And then it allows you to work through and then start going after the more difficult keywords but nobody else talks about this topical authority score. And it's so key to to get the growth of a website. Otherwise, too many people are going after the really difficult bottom of the funnel terms to start off with. And then they're demotivated because they're not ranking. And I'm like, you've, you've, you've got so many easier ones to get going and get the traffic for. You get the historical data, 
which then funnels through to then go after the more difficult keywords. No, I think you've you've really nailed that. And it's increasing your efficiency rate can have impact on your confidence. Like you said, you get demotivated because you're firing at this. And why isn't this working? Because you can't be about, you can't be the best solution for pricing for seven different types of product overnight. You know, you have to put in the labor of, of, of the love of, of all of the pieces. Um, I, I'd love your sense of, and, and something that you've been very successful in is keeping your content differentiated even when, or explicitly when, you see that a market is maybe copycat or, 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 or diluted by copycats. And you know, I always like to say right now, especially with the unlimited supply of content that generative AI creates, it's even more important for your early stage awareness content to be wildly differentiated. It's, you know, you can't, you, you can't live on a generic what is, and I used to run whatis.com, I know. <laughs> you can't live on a generic what is site. You can't live on a generic definition. You can't live on a generic guide or a duplicated guide anymore. It's gotta be different. How, how do you take something that the industry might think it's cut and dry, right? It's a simple answer or it's a simple page and turn it into something differentiated. How do you make that your standard? And I know you do that. I mean, I mean, the biggest part of it was um, when we when we actually first start and we employ content writers, we get them to play the game, guess who? And guess who's where you're trying to guess, you've got a game and you've got all these people in front of you and you're saying, oh, have they got blonde mm -hmm. there? Have they got glasses? Have they, have they, um, and, you, and you're trying to find out who it is. And we get them to do that. And the reason why we start to get them to play that game is because we want to try to come up with ideas that's information game. And the information game, Peyton, is key. And we knew that AI was coming out and we knew that everyone was doing copycat content. And we was like, we need to do something that's different. Like if everyone's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are all the same. If everyone's saying how amazing this review is, maybe we've got to go against the grain and say what's bad about it, right? We can say, we can still give a few of the positives, but we can say, well, wait on a minute, this isn't good and this isn't good and this isn't, and, and sometimes go completely against what others are saying. And, and Google likes throwing in a wild card. And especially when you're only one of two or three others that are saying that you don't like X, Y, and Z about it, and you're doing like sentiment analysis and checking to see both sides of the argument. When, when you're starting doing stuff like that, then you are different and Google loves you for it because you're giving something back to the readers, which is different. If you don't like number one result, well, they want to show number two result that's different to number one result. So be different. Don't just do just, just solely do AI content. Make certain you've got a tone of voice and the brand voice that you're going to kind of give your authority so people want to come to your site for the reviews because you give the most honest reviews that they are out there, not just, yeah, this lawnmower is amazing because I earn affiliate link. Yeah, this lawnmower is amazing because I earn affiliate commission. Yeah, this lawnmower is amazing because I, I earn affiliate commission. And that's what majority of them was doing. Yeah, it's right on. And and I think that you give a great example of a, um, a point of view. Having a point of view at all is critical, right? And then is it yeah. differentiated? Um, the, you know, I, I think that that's where the human in the loop components um, become so critical. So you can use artificial intelligence to, um, to augment these processes, but they should be injecting your point of view or you should be, you know, making sure that it follows through. So I love the examples you use because it's, you know, if I land on this page, I don't get what I expected. That's yeah. critical you don't you know you don't make a decision you know you're, these are the best lawnmowers and you don't actually tell me what you think the best lawnmower is that's a huge red flag right you don't have an opinion i um, mean you're not actually following yeah. through um and then it's does this query deserve an experience i think that's what you yeah. got that's what you need to be thinking about so did you actually have to push the, that lawnmower or are you acting like a journalist like did you can you prove that you actually talked to people at the lawnmower companies or somebody that did have that experience where maybe you can't feed all of those 10 dog foods to your dog, which you should not do. But, you know, you actually did the work to know whether they actually are good dog foods. So um, I think that that is about product reviews, but this is a fit for anything, whether you're in B2B SaaS, 
you know, um, why is your definition of this topic blue ocean for your SaaS company? How does it represent yeah. your business, right? Uh, when you write differentiated content, it should also be IP that people can't replicate even though it's in plain sight. So that was what you yeah. referenced. Like your experience with the lawnmower, I can't steal it. I can't pretend I had that experience, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and be authentic. And have you had any experience with, um, you know, situations where maybe you've been tempted to not be authentic um, or people have given you advice to not be authentic with these things and just like pretend you actually reviewed them? You know, what, what's, been, what's been your experience with that? Yeah, I mean, all if I'm being honest with you, back seven or eight years ago, I, I I was doing affiliate sites and I was doing it exactly the same way as what everyone's doing now. I was I was building sites that here's the best gaming chairs, and I'd not mm -hmm. once bought any one of the ten <laughs> gaming chairs. Here's mm -hmm. the best ten lawnmowers. Here's the best ten head streamers. Here's the best, and like right. even like we we're in the casino market. Here's the best casinos. And it's like the casinos only just come out yesterday and we're like, oh, we've got all this experience on this casino. And we're like, we we hadn't, right? And you could see right through it. And with our R&D testing team, and, and the, the, the biggest one that we came across, um, which is off-page kind of solutions, is we actually built up our own social media team as well. And what we tried to start doing is uh, we'd have people that was living in Reddit, Quora, uh, on Pinterest, um, sharing stuff on like Flickr, in LinkedIn, on Twitter and stuff like that. And what we'd start to do is if there was, let's say a new casino site had come out, we'd start to do a poll on Twitter and we'd try to start saying, what's your thoughts about this casino, right? And we'd send it back to our review page and that traffic from Twitter that we was getting was actually helping our, our review page rank as well. But actually what we tried to start doing is we'd set up like um, discussions in Reddit and in Quora. What do you think that this brand could do better? And when people was coming back to us saying that stuff that they didn't like, we would put into our reviews as disadvantages. But we was linking through to this forum and people was going back and forward from the forum and, and engaging with it. And in a way, we was getting free content. And we was allowing the whole community to give their honest opinion. If someone's won big money, we'd say that they'd won big money. If someone didn't get paid out for two weeks and they had to verify the ID, we were saying, make certain you verify your ID. So all this information wasn't even, there was no correlation. Nobody else had got this information in. It was all real information from online and social media that we gathered from our groups and the traffic back to our site became the most authentic. And we kind of fell into it, I would say, almost at the time because it, because, because the traffic was helping us, we was doing it more. And as we started to do it more, we naturally got more information gained, if that makes sense. Right. Um, and this is where I'm a massive advocate now. This is where it's come from being a black hat SEO to a, a content production powerhouse. We're getting so much content and we're getting asked so many questions now that we're like, I don't know, if we're being asked this question on Reddit, surely someone's asking Google as well. So then we'd start, even though search volume might show zero in, in your kind of keyword research tools, we would... Um, we would write articles because we know people was asking those questions. And before you know it, these zero search volume keywords was getting 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 monthly searches on the page and stuff. So we then was the first to write about it. And then we then getting that information gain of new content that's then obviously going, going out as well. So yeah, it's worked really well for us. Well, I mean, you're describing community community or user-led journalism or, you know, yeah. an editorial team who embraced that, you know, a decade ago, those folks are really happy about themselves right now, uh, right? You know, they, they're like, hey, but it's, it's not necessarily because the, that content's being boosted now. It's just being treated fairly. I mean, over time, yeah. it, will, it will also be stratified by good and bad. You know, that's Google's job, right? They have to figure yeah. out what's good and what's bad to them at the, this moment. You may like it right now, you may not, but 
for a long period of time, those types of sites were um, not being treated fairly. Now, the realization that they are pr producing potentially high quality content and low quality content gives them a unique challenge. And that's what you're seeing uh, happen right now is um, where, but you've got to be careful though, right? If you're, if you're living and dying by user-generated content, your moderation becomes king. And maybe your site about that casino is also about, you know, um, you know, speculative stock picks. I'm just making that up. But you got to be yeah. careful. Like, you don't want to live on that topic. You're living on the other topic. So it's there. Yeah. You just got to acknowledge it much like you would have if you had, you know, a low, quali a low quality section of your site. Um, and that's something people aren't used to. Um, you know, nobody has been moderating those things. I, I also I love your example of creating those discussions. And I, I think some folks are looking at that on first glance and they say that, is that a black hat technique? Why would it be? Why would that be considered a black hat technique? A great example of that, you know, over a decade ago um, uh, in SEO, um, I think it might've been the original I forget who originally said it was, you know, can you create a situation where a reader, you're answering the reader's next five questions, right? Yep. And, or you're stoking them with additional questions to be part of the community um, in a publishing yep. uh, sites, site network that I, that I worked on and managed while you were reading, you were hit with important next questions for discourse and it would actually stoke value through that publisher and what that actually did even 10 years ago was it made our top of funnel stuff rank well uh just so you know yeah. so the fact that we were having that middle of the funnel troubleshooting community engagement discussion actually would make that early stage awareness stuff perform well that's a little bit of yeah. a secret sauce type of thing. Uh, but you're talking about the exact same thing. Have you had that though experience? Um, you said casino. Um, have you had the situation where you've validated with all of your testing that there are some um, toxic zones or zones that get treated differently than other zones? It's a question that yeah, I just- Yeah, for sure. I mean, these, 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 um, you've got to be very careful, obviously, with compliance and stuff in the casino market. Um, right. So UKG, UKGC and stuff like that, um, UK Gambling Commission. Um, yeah. So you've got to be careful on that front. But then also the casino industry, if I'm being honest, like I, at some point I need to leave it because it's so negative in um, negative SEO attacks, spammy links being sent through to you, um, fake traffic like CTR bots being here. And it just opens up a, a massive can of worms of something. It's already difficult enough to get a technically well-built site, write good quality content, do topical authority, and try to naturally acquire some links. But then to, to throw on top of that that you need protection and bodyguards on the front of your house and a moat around your castle to make certain that you don't get taken down, it becomes, it becomes difficult. Um, so you, you encounter different types of problems. Um, but yeah, it's, um, or if you have got a Reddit or a Quora kind of um, plot, a, a URL a discussion ranking, you get loads and loads of fake accounts coming, spamming, spamming those kind of discussions and stuff like that. Um, with like trying to like, hit a load of affiliate links or pawn links to try and take it down. So you, you, you come across quite a lot of different, um, different issues along the way, if that makes sense. No, I think it, it, it what my experience in that I have, you know, I'm an, I'm an investor in a, uh, and, and I have worked in that space for quite some time as well. And it, you know, speaking from experience, it's the brands that have amazing content and amazing communities. Um, some of them dropped their communities, right? They were just like, ah, I don't want to manage this thing. And then realizing, you know, brands that have amazing communities and amazing content um, and great brands, like you mentioned, are now, I mean, in this kind of a chaotic discourse are worth a lot more than they were. You're, yeah. you're going to start to see large brands buying communities, um, you know, even more so than, you know, especially in um, some of the fringe industries and some of the more aggro, high black hat zones. So, um, 
that's just something a little prediction for 2024 a lot of uh legitimate companies are going to yeah. get bought uh, a lot of, lot of legitimate communities are going to start getting bought it's a great time to um to have been ahead of the game and in, in caring about social caring about discover caring about um uh, other channels uh, because those are the ones that are going to be uh exciting uh to, uh assets the valuations are probably too low right now they'll probably go up um and like you said though buying uh or investing in uh distressed property or um penalized or ones that have degraded i hate to say penalized because you don't know unless you've done the research of whether you are penalized or you've just been yeah you, know, you had your screws tightened how do you think about that how, how do you go about um justifying that and is it based on the fact that you know how to create high quality content and so you're kind of betting on yourself? Yes, yeah, so there's, there's a few different factors. Um, I don't want to give the game away too much because I'm going to come <laughs> yeah, across yeah. with a I know, that's a pretty crazy but... question to ask. You don't need to answer um, it anymore. Because if but, I had, if no, I had no, your I mean, answer and pushed it with mine, it'd be a good thing, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, to be fair, I, I will answer it. I'm, I'm quite as open as I can. So sure. the, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of sites that um, might, I know you're saying you don't like the word penalize, but mm -hmm. I'm on about completely not ranking in the top 100 for any keywords anymore um, in in Google. They've mm -hmm. absolutely been decimated, right? Mm -hmm. But some of these people don't realize, and I'm very, very, very surprised at this at the moment, that how many people I speak to that own the, these big affiliate sites that was once earning two, 300,000 pound a month in commissions, that now have dropped and they get no traffic anymore in Google, but they're still earning 20, 30,000 a month and they're not certain why. And actually, we know the reason why, and I'll be honest with you, like this is what people now need to try to start doing. They need to make certain they've got Bing Webmaster Tools set up because yes, Bing is nowhere near as big as Google, but the amount of traffic that you also get from Bing is pretty significant for, for a lot of industries. So sometimes what we're doing is we're buying certain sites now that have been hit by Google, knowing that just even if, even if we couldn't recover it in Google, we would get our money back in two to three years just from Bing traffic. But then, yes, we are recovering them. And we're recovering them by de-optimizing certain money pages that are over-optimized, using certain tools like Phrase and Surfer SEO and all these other tools where they've keyword stuff. It re it reminds me back five years, six years ago of um, over-optimization of anchor text on backlinks. And now what they've done is they've gone and hit keywords on the page too many times because they've used a content optimization tool that says correlation tells you you need to get the word best on the page 23 times. And it's like, no, you don't. You don't need to get it on the page 23 times. But because this tool told them that that's what they need to do, they're over-optimized. So by de-optimizing that content, by, by actually deleting certain pages, so some of them have gone too wide. You can't be a jack of all trades. If You can't be the best gardening um, affiliate about lawnmowers and hedge trimmers, but then also be the best about um, gaming chairs and mouse mats. Niche down into what you're good at. Is it technology? Is it gardening? Is it whatever it is that you want to go down? So if you're not ranking well for gaming, get rid of that cluster. Delete it off the site. Focus on, on what you might have some topical authority in and then double down on that niche. De-optimize the money pages. Build out pages that you're missing. Get the nice clusters being set back up. And yes, we're recovering a lot of sites from the helpful content update. But is it easy? No. Does it cost quite a lot of money? Yes. It's almost like you need to... You know, all these people have built, like I said, they've built the property on quicksand. You now need to get the foundations set back up. Make certain you're looking at it as being a real business. Put telephone numbers on the website, um, an address on the website, an email address, and about, about us, a meet the team, a careers page just look like a real business try to get unique images try to get videos if you can of using the tools that's unique on your channel um, and and have these differentiator 
reviews if you can to be different to what some of us have got. So there's a lot there that you need to do. Can you recover? The answer is a firm yes, you can. Yeah, I love, I love the idea of looking at a page and saying, what is it that I'm bringing or that my site's bringing to this topic that no one else can? Because maybe yeah. I have a data source or I have a certain level of expertise um, or what's a story I can tell, right? That no yeah. one else can. No one else can tell that story and why, right? You know, you have your experience um, in, uh, you know, in, in search and externally with gaming and with, uh, you know, with with uh, uh, racing and, and all this stuff. And that gives you that mystique that allows you to follow through. Does your site do that? And I think that that's where um, most folks need that remediation. Um, and then it's where you have, you know, you mentioned over optimization. Um, I think that over optimization comes in a lot of different flavors, as you've mentioned. Uh, and yep. you know, just being real and saying, like, should this page, um, it should this page be all things to all people, right? I think that there was a lot of misinformation in the market about um, what cannibalization was, what internal links should be, um, and I think that you really need to go back to basics and think critically about what a user would expect. And the user does not expect this crazy over-optimized page it, it, that is totally generic and doesn't provide any value. It's just not um, doing, yeah. not, not appealing to that mission. So I thought that was cool. So when you're creating content now and planning, like, what can you say that speaks to that process? Uh, like, why would you consider yourself kind of the, um, the producing in a way that's novel or, or kind of best in, best in breed or best class right now? So we, um, we try to make certain we don't play hide and seek with our content, that we're very, very concise in giving the answers. Um, it doesn't need all the fluff to just to get keywords on the page. We try to think for the reader and the user first. Um, we try to make them that it's media rich, like you said, with unique images, unique videos. And, and I've, I've spoken a few times about over-optimization. Well, actually, the algorithm is an algorithm, and it is basic math, right? I'm not saying it's basic math. It's not basic. It's very difficult, but it's a formula. And there's also, you can be under-optimized. So, again, going back to your infantry tool, when you're also looking at the, um, the topical authority of the site, you can very quickly start to understand what pages are under-optimized, and you can work yourself on those pages, and you can start to make certain that, have I covered all the questions that people might have on that page topic? If not, well, let's start answering those questions. Have I covered the whole topic of what they might want to know about what it is? No. Okay, well, let's cover it. But then also make certain that from ma what Market Moves pulls out with regards to topic modeling, you, when you start looking at certain topics that you've not covered when you're going into research, you start quickly realizing, hey, on a minute, yeah, people would want to know about this, this, and this. Right. So then it, it's a cheat sheet. It is completely a cheat sheet. You're, you're in an exam and you've got the answers. Work through the answers and think about what the user wants and, and make certain you're optimized, not over-optimized, but optimized enough to give what they want and B, have the differentiator factors as well. I think that what you just said, I mean, I wish I could replay that to everybody who like comes to the, our website uh, because it, it's right now it is about being smart and being sharp and interpreting data. You know, I'm, I'm actually working on some yep. things and market Muse is working on some things that helps you interpret that data into editorial angles and uh, ways to cover a topic um, and get you a little bit further along um, with, you know, being a better content strategist. But what you described is so awesome. Like I, I was speaking with a, a content strategist for a Fortune 500 company, um, I, and they said almost the exact same thing you did. They're like, this is my blind spot detector. Like I might have forgotten that angle. I might have forgotten yeah. that, oh, yeah, when I – because it's, it's in my world where I'm – all I do all day is review lawnmowers. I think that everybody knows how to – you know, uh, sharpen a blade. So I wouldn't even yeah. mention it. 
you know, because because it's sharpening blades is just obvious. You know, you do it. You know, yeah. in brewing, you know, I might I might not mention you know the the uh, alcohol val volume, uh, you know, or uh, calculate why what IBU means. You know, um, yeah. because I just if you don't know what that is, right? What, what, what are you doing, right? Um, but you forget yeah. that having that reminder that comes from a place of expertise, you might have completely forgotten that. So I love that because. What you're doing is actually um, intent analysis through your own skills. It's a skill that you have to develop. So I think yeah. a lot of people, they go into these SEO tools, they see a list of words. First of all, they think it's a list of words that they have to like pump yeah. in. It's not. Yeah. It, these yeah, are yeah. things you have to you have to make part of your story, right? Because yeah. in market music's case, and you know, in, you know, this is a three-dimensional model that we smush into a list you know it's not yeah. it, there's more to it that we can't show you obviously because it wouldn't make sense um to yeah. make it wouldn't be easy for you, anyone to interpret it's already hard enough um, but i love the way you described it because it's you you're taking words and you're turning them into something that means a lot to your reader versus you know peppering in 15 keywords into the page and you know there's a big difference to that and i i, I love the way you described it. it it's very intuitive to me but it's not intuitive to everybody yeah, also touching upon that, something else that we failed miserably at previously when we was using, and we was actually using Market Moves, which in my opinion, and I'm not saying it because I'm on your podcast, it's the number one content optimization tool. Yeah, we was failing miserably, right? Using your tool with our writers because we was doing exactly what you just said. We had the list of keywords, or the list of topics, and they were just trying to work it in and they're just slamming it all in the introduction and in the summary, and they wasn't properly breaking it down of where it needs to be at. And and now we spend more money on getting our briefs to our writers to be bang on and make certain that we're covering the, the source context. So what's the context of the page? What's the desired outcome that we want from this page that makes it different and making certain that we've got the right headings in place that our writers now can't do any wrong pretty much because we give them everything that we expect to see. And it means that we've had to spend more money on the front end, but it means at the back end, we've, we have to do a lot less kind of progressive optimization because mm -hmm. we've got it in the front end set up. Our writers love it now. They're getting through the content a lot faster and they've got all the topics that they need to on the page and it just works. Mm -hmm. It's seamless now where previously, when we just give them the list of topics to go after without yeah. pr a proper brief and without the context of the page, it became right. difficult. Yeah, well, I'd like to, you know, you said one of my favorite words there, context. Uh, a lot of people have a hard time taking that to um, action and into editorial uh, act actions. And I think that that's where, you know, we have to, be in the you know you have to look yourself in the mirror you said it before it's you know how much what has your existing content told the world how much content do you have is it high quality has it built authority for you how does that influence difficulty which means that how i know how much work i need to do right uh, i need to build 50 pages on this because we don't have any existing power here we got to try to build yeah. it and that's speculative right so how do you yeah. how do you um you know um justify kind of doing so much work on testing is one and like because you're doing a lot and then how do you take speculative shots now when you have to invest a lot more into content like do you are you still taking a lot of shots or is it is it less so with kind of the changes or you're trying to be no, more absolutely we're, invest we're investing more than we ever have invested ever um we i feel that the opportunity if you know what you're doing is better than it's ever been ever mm -hmm. Because there's so many people now at present that's got uncertainty. And mm -hmm. there's so many people that are, are using the wrong tools. They're yep. buying the wrong type of toxic links. They're not, they're not, do, they're thinking they're doing topical authority, but the keyword research and topical maps are not properly set out. So they're not yeah. using like, just even, even without using any tools, like just using stuff within Google, like people also ask related searches. Um, the auto suggests, so type in your keyword A, type in your keyword B, seeing what shows up, working through that, understanding then, I mean, yes, go and check in 
what's ranking and seeing what headings they have. And you might go, yes, you know what? I quite like that heading and that heading and that heading. And getting all the best bits from your competition. I'm still an advocate to see what's ranking and check the intent that what Google likes and getting their best bits, but then being better. And that's the most important part. Then becoming better, then using a tool like Market Moves to make certain that they can keep you in check to make certain you're covering all the topics that need to be on the page. And then it's just rinse and repeat. And yes, you're saying it's expensive. It is expensive, but it's very lucrative as well. If you can recover a website or you're knowing it's, do you know what's more expensive? Spending 100,000 on a site and it not ranking. That's more expensive. Me having it, me having a team and me understanding that I need another 50 pages. That's not expensive. That is, is that's, making certain strategically and mathematically we're doing things that works if my testing team didn't know what to do then it's expensive trying to do seo and not knowing what topics i need to cover becomes expensive me doing what we're doing now yes we've got a big team but it's not that expensive because we know the direction that we need to go and i couldn't think of anything worse now than being blindfolded and trying to do things that I think is the right thing to do and wasting money. Because there's two things I hate. Well, one thing I hate even more. But one thing I don't like doing is wasting money. The next biggest thing is my number one pet hate is wasting time. I, I have a limited amount of time and I cannot waste time. So I need to make certain my testing team are testing, testing, testing for what's working so I can move forward be at the front of innovation with regards to what's working with SEO. And then it allows all my different businesses to grow, my lead generation sites to be working. And and yes, it's not cheap, but it's cheaper than not having a site that's not ranking. Right. Wow. I mean, that's said very, that, you know, in, in, I think it's just hearing it from you is, it's because you're, it does, you're not saying you win every time, right? You're not saying that no, it's, no, it's no. not, it's, you're not saying that it's not hard. I mean, it, you yeah. know, and but it is, it is, it's worth the, it's worth the investment, and the speculation is the pain. I mean, you know, I would, I want to get as much information as I can. You know, I, I use lots of different solutions, and and I am, you know, meticulous in how I analyze search results. Um, I, you know, I've, I've added, I've just recently added some things to our search results where you can pull filters and refinements and knowledge cards and knowledge graph data mm-hmm. and sticks and beds and all this fun stuff um because i'm meticulous i so like you said i want to see all all of what's there not so i can you know copy it but so that i know maybe i wouldn't even yep. have thought of this particular angle and there's nothing better for me when i'm dealing with a competitor who over optimizes content and their content package is basically, and I call it the sort descend in keyword planner, right? They walked through the list of keywords by search volume, and they wrote a page for each one of those keywords, right? Because it's just, it, it, those are the easiest competitors to beat. It, and that's to me, you just it kind of walked through the other way there is to say, I want to be thoughtful, I want to be differentiated, and I can take a site that was broken and fix it, or I could also start that from scratch, but I have the same level of confidence because I understand, you know, what my team can do and, and the testing that they can execute. Um, cool. Well, I've got some awesome questions yeah. uh, coming in. Um, what um, industries are you thinking about, James? What industries that you might not have been thinking about building content in would you consider in 2024? Good question. Thank you, Anne. Um I'm heavily at the moment going into artificial intelligence. Um, I just want to try to make certain that I'm at the forefront of innovation for artificial intelligence to make certain that it's not easy for others to catch me up. I'm not saying I'm doing artificial intelligence across my sites for link building and content. I just want to know quite a lot about it. So I'm investing quite a lot of like AI imagery, AI videos, um, some AI mm-hmm. content brands, and I'm doing a lot of testing on that. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm pretty big on in 2024. With regards to industries for our lead generation, our products and stuff like that, I'm already in 
over 600 different industries. Mm -hmm. So it's not really new industries. It's just seeing what what sub niches within an existing niche right. might be making them the most money. So like, mm -hmm. I'm in, let's say plumbing, and then the, you realize that the plumbers, they make the majority of their money doing commercial wet rooms, not doing shower rooms in residential and commercial is a bigger market. So you go into, the, into commercial wet rooms for roofing, I do heritage roof. I do all different types of roofing, but I do heritage roofing is the most profitable. So you start going down a rabbit hole of what niches are going to make you the most money. Um, so I wouldn't really say it's new niches. I'd say it's more digging down into sub niches is, is kind of where I'm at for 2024. Cool. What has been some, I mean, and obviously I'm working on lots of things with artificial intelligence and, uh, you know, we're, we're building an, an entire platform that relates to cluster analysis and prioritization right now, um, content strategy, fun, lots of fun stuff in the works. Uh, yeah. uh, what, are, what are the things that um, you've been surprised with? Um, you know, I, I think imagery, using imagery effectively can yeah. be a, an amazing win. I mean, the, the days of stock, um, low quality stock, I mean, I don't know why anyone would use low quality stock right now. There's just yep. oodles of different better opportunities. But what are the, some other things maybe that um, you've been surprised by and have so, been able to ad adopt quickly into your process? So there's several different things of, um, of what I've been very, very, very impressed with with um, AI. So one of them being imagery, like you said, another one being um, getting a collection of data, big source data, and then getting AI to come across and give me unique data sources that I can use, that I can get out there, which is unique and uh, differentiator. The information's already out there, but I'm presenting it now in a format that's never been presented before. So I'm, I'm being, and I'm now the data source for that information is, that's huge. Um, faceless videos for certain like local lead generation sites, um, Getting because I'm I want to make sure I'm being seen in in Google web search, in Google images, in Google videos, in YouTube. I want to be seen everywhere. So I'm, um, the AI videos are working great. And then the big one is I don't know whether I'm going to send it out to the public or not. I've got um, an AI rewriting tool um, for and it's called Revive, and I've got a re. A, a, I mean, it's only for internal use at the moment. And it's actually de-optimizing content. So it's getting an existing article. It's getting all your topics of what you have. And it's de-optimizing content. So it's strategically looking at what words are used too many times on the page, removing those out and just reworking that content, removing any contextless words, removing any fluff. So where people used to go, this needs to be a 4,000 word article. Well, no, if you can write that in 3,000 words, but getting all the main entities and the information density is great, do it in 3,000 words, not in 4,000 words. And we're kind of doing that quite a bit as well. And these are for the the sites where we're looking to buy the sites, de-optimize mm -hmm. certain pages, delete certain pages, try to get better like data sources, AI imagery, AI videos. There's a lot of like different things of what we're doing but i'd say the biggest one is using it for data um mm -hmm. is key wow that's killer wow that's a that's that's the best answer i've heard from anyone on those types of questions too i love the idea of we i used to call market me as the fluff finder optimized because if you were scrolling through a paragraph and it had nothing highlighted it probably shouldn't be there um or yeah. if it was like way over optimized and there was heavy heavy green or heavy heavy uh highlights that did probably was something i want to investigate uh, what you want is like yeah you're in a in a conversation or in an article you're probably going to mention a couple things in that paragraph you don't want it too high too low um but yeah the the the, the ten thousand word article that tries to tell you you know everything about beekeeping as well as zebras it's not really uh, doing the job um yeah. so i love that I love the idea of, so I'm, I'm really into kind of blue ocean marketing and you you touched on it and when I defined it, it's what data does my company have or do I know that no one else knows, but you take a, you, you did a little spin on that, that I loved, um, which was uh, no one has ever presented this 
angle on this data yet. Um, I think there's yeah. a market to, to really be thinking about that. I've been thinking about that in a particular industry uh, in which I write, which pe most people know yeah. about, but it involves uh, uh, a, you know, a particular liquid uh, that I uh, produce. Uh, yeah. But th that's something that's a constant goal is what information do I have and then what information isn't presented well. And I think that's amazing advice. All right. Well, James, this has been amazing, amazing conversation. I think there's a lot of people that think that you can't re recover sites right now. Um, yep. It's hard work. People have learned. I think that you really got to examine what low quality gray hat, black hat techniques might you still have trauma from or examples of on your sites and be real. Make sure your mirror is clear. Um, yeah. And, you know, that includes low quality backlink profiles um, as well as, you know, cross link profiles. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you what, what other things should they be thinking about? Should this audience be thinking about when they're thinking about um, getting to being focused again on content? Maybe they gave up on content. They're like, man, I just need to do PPC. Uh, but that content can win. We've got to invest. We've got to be sharp. Um, you know, what, 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 what would you give it for advice? And I'll give you the last word on that. So I'd say there's three things um, that people need to look at. Um, one is if you've got a site that has been hit and it was earning some good money, mm -hmm. I'm not just saying it because I'm on the Market News podcast, go and get <laughs> the infantry set up and run it against the whole domain. Go and see what topical authority you actually have that's run <laughs> against Market News. Go right. and optimize your, your least optimized pages that Market News is saying. Go and get that higher optimized. Go and then find, if you if you haven't got the highest score on topical authority, go and do a proper topical map to cover that specific topic. Then go and tick all the boxes for EEAT. Just, just tick the boxes. It costs next to no money to, to go and get yourself a privacy policy, a cookie policy, get a telephone number, get an address. And then if you have been buying backlinks, maybe go out and get yourself a proper disavow. So just remove the toxic. There's so many guest post link farms. There's so many people that are thinking of buying um, good quality links and they're actually just PBNs and they're actually very, very mm -hmm. toxic. And too many people are talking about DR as being the only metric and not talking about trust and toxicity. So I would say EEAT, uh, um, getting yourself a disavow to remove toxic backlinks and then properly go and get the infantry set up with market moves. Run it against, against the whole domain. Don't just do research at page by page level. You have to run it against the whole domain to get the full story. And they're the main three parts of recovering a site. Ah, thanks, James. That is a pleasure. And if anyone doesn't know how to reach you, how to reach out to you, how can they get in touch with you? You are a wealth of knowledge. I want to get three more zeros for your hat. So how can I get in touch with you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got I've got jamesdooley.com. I've only actually just started in the last six months doing my own personal branding. I try mm -hmm. to always hustle in silence and let success be the noise. Um, I was I was a, a massive advocate of building brands. Um, I kind of like keeping myself to myself. I'm a family man. Um, but recently, I think because a lot of the fluff and a lot of the SEO myths that was being shared out online. I felt like I needed to come out a, a little bit more to share some knowledge with people to make certain that they don't do what I did for many years and waste a lot of money and waste a lot of time. Um, I'm at a position where, and I don't mean this in an arrogant way, I don't need to work another day in my life, but I absolutely love innovation of SEO. Um, I love the industry. I love networking in the industry. Um, I've got jamesdooley.com. Um, I've nothing really to sell. Um, apart, I do obviously I do lead generation and I've got brands and stuff. But me, myself personally, I don't really sell anything. But I've got jamesdooley.com, and from there you should see like my Twitter, my YouTube, my Facebook, and stuff like that, where you can come and connect on there, and we can have debates or you can ask me any questions that you want. Awesome. Um, it's just it's been a pleasure. Um, always just get my brain pumping, get excited about search, get excited about content every time I talk to you. Um, and, and it's been wonderful having you on the show. And I think that there's, I can think off the top of my head about 18 to 20 amazing takeaways and you can't ask for more than that. 
on a Wednesday. <laughs> I think today is Wednesday, right? Oh, today's Happy Valentine's Day. So, James, Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, you. Happy Valentine's. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think you're my Valentine today because <laughs> just leave, leave me with hope, leaves me with happiness, um, and, and I, I just I just really appreciate the time um, and the efforts. And if anyone has any questions for me, Jeffrey underscore Coil on the X Twitter um, link. In. I answer everything and as long as you're not asking me for links um, and Jeff at marketmuse.com I'd put my cell phone on here if I could and James you know that I'll talk to you later and thanks again yeah. See ya. cheers Jeff cheers